Good morning. It's January 21st, 2016, and it's 6.48 in the morning. Um, I'm getting back to my Head First Java College book, and I haven't done this in a little while. Uh, we're on page 82. Actually, we're on page 80, but I'm going to go over the code uh, on 82. I want to refer to code from this link 3, this 3 bark size first. If you recall, we created this dog object right here that had two instance variable size and name and one method uh, bark. And then when we came over here and actually typed it in the Java code, we have class dog int size string name. And then we have one single bark method that required conditions to be met. Um, depending on the size of the dog, we would get a different output. If the dog size was greater than 60, we'd, we would get this woof woof. And then if that wasn't true, but the size was greater than 14, which means, you know, between 15 and 59, then our printout would be rough rough, which is supposed to indicate a medium-sized dog. And if neither of those conditions are correct, we have this else condition, which is like a default, which means that it's not greater than 60, it's not greater than 14, it has to be 13 and under, then you have system.out.println yip yip for a tinier dog. So then when we came over here and created our class dog test with a public static void main string args, we used the name of the class right here that's our object, dog, and we gave it a, a reference name. So we created an object reference variable and we set it equal to new dog. And then we used the name one or the dot operator to grab this instance variable called size and actually set it. And we did it three times total so that we had three different dogs. Dog one had a size of 70, dog two had a size of eight, dog three had a size of 35. So then when we came down here and used the one, two, and three with the dot operators and called the bark method, we called the three different uh, possible outputs based on the size. Well, what we're going to learn in encapsulation is that we don't want to directly access int size and string name. We are going to use getters and setters because we want to be able to put, um, we want to be able to keep these data safe. And f the example that they used is what if somebody did one dot size equals zero? So then we're going to create a dog with a size of zero. It's not, it doesn't have any weight at all. Um, we don't want to be able to do that. So by creating getters and setters, we can put additional conditions, uh, error checking, and we can protect the int size and string name. And also it tells us that we should create our instance variables of our class and set them to private. And then the getters and setters that uh, we want to allow our user to access, we are going to um, code those as public. So I'm going to go on ahead. I have to hit uh, pause for a second, and then I'll be right back. OK, let me resume where I left off. So what I'm on right now is this 10 link. Uh, my notes are going to go in here for encapsulation. I've got two files here open in Notepad++. The open java.html, which is this entire web page right here that um, goes over the book chapter by chapter with all these notes. And then 10.html, which is the page that's going to open up in this iframe right here. Um, so I'm going to do my notes. As you can see, the page is nothing more than uh, there's a, a long style in the head. And then the body, we've got a class of pink. Field set, legend, the word encapsulation, which is what you see right here at the top. Uh, audio controls, because um, what I copied and pasted used an audio control, but in this particular instance, I'm uh, going to have a, this video open up in here. So I have to do some changes to that part. Um, and the text area I'm actually going to use right now to put notes in here, but then I'm going to replace it with this video. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm, I don't know. I'm not sure. But anyway, for right now, oh, and that's the end of the field set, end of the div, end of the body, end of the HTML for this 
snippet. So I'm going to go into the text area and starting on page 82, they're going to show us encapsulation by making two files. A class good dog, which is going to be the object, it's going to have uh, an instance variable of, of size. It's only going to have one instance variable and it's going to have um, one bark method, which is the same bark method that we seen in three. This, uh, if size is greater than 60, do this. If size is greater than 14, do this. And otherwise, do this. So it's going to be familiar. The only difference is this, like I said, we're using the object reference variable one, the dot operator, and then we're directly connecting to size. What we're going to do right now is we're going to uh, give size a getter and a setter, which actually the way they've got uh, it shown in this page, they're showing get size and set size in here as a method with bark. So, Um, that's something to remember. One instance variable, and there's actually three me methods, the getter, the setter, and the bark. All right, so let me go back to here. Let me start typing in my text area. This is kind of difficult the way I've got my setup here because I had my book in front of me, but then it's in the way of the keyboard. Okay, so... What I'm typing in this text area, when I save it up here in Notepad++ and then I hit the refresh, it's going to actually show in here in my, uh, my text area. So, private, oops, I'm sorry, got ahead of myself. Class, good dog. This is the object now. And we're going to have one instance variable for size, but we're, we're going to set it as private. So private's int size. And now we're going to use getters and setters for the user to access. Instead of accessing size directly, they're going to access get size and set size. Or they're going to call get size and uh, set size. So we have public int get size this is a method and in that method we are going to return size okay we're going to return the value we're going to return that size okay so now let me go down and now let me create the setter public void set size and inside the uh, parentheses we're going to put a parameter into s this is going to be like um, an alias for size. The user's going to refer to, they're going to put an argument for S so that they can set size this way. So then we've got um, size equals S. Okay, see size up here that we originally created in the setter we're setting it equal to s. Okay, then we've got void bark method. And move this up some. This is going to be the same as before if a condition something's going to happen. And then uh else if a condition something else is going to happen. And then finally, else, this will be the um, default. So if size is greater than 60, or if size is greater than 14, and else doesn't have a condition because it's the default. So if size is greater than 60, what's going to happen is what is inside of these curly braces. So what's in there is going to be system. This is just going to spit something out in the command prompt system dot out dot print line. And what are we going to print? That. 
Otherwise, if that's not true, we're going to test this condition. And what I could do just to speed things up is take this output code and just copy and paste it here and just change what it's going to do. All right. And the same thing with the very last, the default. I can just copy and paste that. And this is going to be for our little dog. OK, so let me note um, Because I'm actually in the HTML page here, in order for me to make my comment, I have to do it this way. The less, si less than sign, the exclamation point, two dashes, and then end it with dash, dash, greater than sign. But when I'm, do but when I'm running this in my... Um, when I'm running this in my command prompt, I believe I have to take this off because it wants to read it as something instead of a comment. If I'm not mistaken, I remember that happening before. Okay, so we've got our private instance variable. We have a public way to get at it and a public way to set it. And we've got a bark method there. Actually, it goes all the way to there. Now, this right here is the end of the class. You see how the class good dog, the first curly brace is red and it's matching this one. This is actually the end of the class good dog, okay? Now just um, so that I can continue here, I'm going to create a second file, but I'm going to show you how I can just create the notes here. Um, next class here, the tester class. So we're going to create the next class right here and then I'm going to copy and paste it into its own Java file up here, but not right now. So here we've got class good dog test. Now remember this is this is the tester, so we need that public static void main string args execution statement string array args. All right, we can move this up some. Everything's going to go in our main method. Now we're going to create, down here, we're going to create references to the good dog method. So we're going to use good dog. We're going to start off with good dog. Good dog one equals new good dog. And now we're going to use the reference variable one, but instead of saying one dot size, we're going to say one dot, oops, I'm sorry set size and we're going to set it to 70 just like we did in 3 but we're using the set size instead of size. And we're going to do the same thing for two other dogs just like we did before except this time we're using this method. So I'm going to copy and paste this but this is going to be created as good dog 2 equals new good dog and then two set size this one's going to be eight okay I take that back they didn't create three dogs here it doesn't really matter it's still going to work the same way it just won't show all three possible outputs it's only going to show two outputs based on the size Okay, so now we're going to use the system dot out dot print line method to print something out based on these sizes that we just set. 
So print line, the first one, dog one. And then we're going to concatenate it with the plus, plus one dot get size. And because that's a method, you have to remember to put in your um, empty curly braces. Now, let's see. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Did I do it? I'm double checking with the book. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Copy and paste down here. This time it's going to spit out to get size. So here we're calling the get size method up here. It's going to return size, and the size is going to be what we just created with set size. So after that, we're going to call the bark methods one dot bark and two dot bark. All right, save this, come over here and refresh. Now you see all the notes that I just created are being pulled through. All of this is what I just typed in my text area section here in this web page. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to create two Java files right up in here in the notepad plus plus right where I'm at. And the first one I'm going to save it as, I'm going to save it on my desktop of course, I'm going to save it as what we named it, good dog, right here. So, good, whoops, good dog.java, save, and good dog test.java, save as good dog test.java save okay so now I've got two blank files created and if I show you the desktop real quick you see right here good dog.java and good dog test.java when I compile these we're going to get the uh, corresponding class file so we'll end up with four um, whoops So I'm going to go back to my 10.html file, the notes that I just did in the text area that you see over here in the web page, and I'm just going to copy this whole thing right here all the way to here. This one says next class here. So I'm going to right click, copy, and put that in good dog, paste. Now this is what I was uh, referring to. The notes that I created down here in my web page that turned green, when I put this in my Java file, I want to get rid of this. If I don't get rid of this, I'm going to get an error message because of this, because you, this is not how you make comments if it's a Java file. All right, now same thing. Go back to my 10.html and copy the code that I put there, but put it in my good dog test file. Okay, save it. Now let me go to my command prompt, run cmd, and let's look at our output. Again, I have to change my directory to where these files are located. See, we have good dog Java, good dog test Java, but a good dog test Java is what I want to run just because that's where the public static void main string args execution statement resides, resides in good dog test. So good dog test.java is what I want to compile. So I hit Java C, which means compile. Good, whoops, good dog test.java, enter. Once this compiles, you'll see these two class files just appeared on my desktop as well. So now that it compiled cleanly, I'm going to just run it. Java, good dog, test, enter. So now you see that dog 1, 70, dog 2, 8, 
woof woof and yip yip. 70 is bigger than 60 so we got the woof woof extra large size dog and yip yip is that little dog that was less than 14 pounds. So I'm going to exit out of my command prompt. I just showed you a few things. I showed you how um, I've got this main page right here where I'm putting my notes in a web page form from my book. I showed you the difference between when, what we learned um, here in chapter 3 when we were first learning how to create an object. We just created these instance variables and then when we made our tester class we used the object's reference variable the dot operator and we directly called the instance variable well now we're learning about encapsulation and when we encapsulate we protect our instance variables by labeling them as private and then we use these two methods to get it get the uh, variable and set the variable and this is how you make a getter you just uh, public, int, or whatever the uh, data type is, get and then return the name of the original instance variable, and public void set, and you put a parameter in there where you actually give it another name, or uh, I guess you can figure it as an alias, it's a parameter that the user will have to satisfy with an argument, and then we set our original instance variable to that parameter name. Um, so that's just showing you the slight difference in, in how encapsulation works. Now I gave myself this note on my navigation list item 10 resume page 80 encapsulation. I don't want to keep that so I'm going to go to my original open Java HTML and I'm going to go down to chapter 4 10 resume page 80. I don't need that information anymore so I'm going to just kill that back out of it and save it then when I run my actual page I just get a regular link um, let's see I don't think I really need to do anything this is gonna end um, the video for this part